Okay, this is part two. Uh, continuing with, with type one hypersensitivity, we'll look at some examples and we'll look at some ideas behind uh, prevention. So just to recap the mechanism and add to that the idea that there are two phases to these diseases. There is the sensitization and then there's the activation. So if you have an allergic response to a substance, then you must have encountered that substance earlier to have become sensitized to it. So on the first exposure to the antigen, B cells bind to the antigen. The antigen is, <coughs> say an antigen in your tissues is washed to the lymph nodes and can encounter B cells. Helper T cells activate the B cells. Helper T cells have been, uh, they've been activated previously, most likely by a dendritic cell. A dendritic cell picked up the allergen, carried it to the lymph nodes and showed it to a T cell. So T cells give the B cell go ahead in this case, the B cell class switches from IgM to Ig, uh, IgE, and then the B cell differentiates into masts, sorry, into memory cells and into plasma cells, and the plasma cells are responsible for generating the IgE. We then have, in this case, mast cells in various parts around the body, in the tissues, with their receptors for the uh, the constant region of IgE. <clears throat> so our different kinds of antibodies have different variations of their constant region. So the receptor for uh, on the surface of our mast cell there only sticks to IgE. And now our IgE is primed, it's sensitized, and it's ready to be triggered. When you come across the uh, the allergen the second time, when the allergen makes it to the mast cells, it cross-links two of those IgEs are triggered at the same time, and then that signal is transferred to the mast cell, which releases its granules. Degranulation of inflammatory mediators and uh, histamine being one of those inflammatory mediators. Depending on where this occurs, will determine where the symptoms are. So what is the uh, importance of histamine? We can kind of uh, think of histamine as being a bouncer at a club. It just wants to get the allergen out of your body. Sneezing gets the allergen out of your upper respiratory tract Tearing up, that washes the allergen out of your eyes. Itching, that removes the allergen from your skin. So whatever it takes to get the job done, whatever it takes to try and hustle that allergen out of the body, that's the job of histamine. It also has a lot of um, uh, other effects on the body as part of causing inflammation. It will make those capillaries. Capillaries are those fine blood vessels that work their way through the tissues. It makes the capillaries leakier, which means more fluid is lost to them. One idea behind the leakiness of the capillaries is that uh, white blood cells can then squeeze out of the blood into the tissues, maybe things like neutrophils, because they're kind of being called. The alarm's gone off. It's like uh, calling the, uh, the fire department. The alarms go off. The responders and the fire trucks rush to the scene. And typically then they have a fire to put out. They have an infection. Maybe think of that splinter. There's bacteria and all kinds of nasty stuff in your tissues. And that needs to be uh, taken care of. But in this case, there's no fire. It's just uh, an allergen that was uh, that's triggered 
the immune response, but um, was missorted into the harmful pile rather than the harmless pile. Because of the leakiness, we have excess uh, leaking of fluids into tissues, and that causes swelling. And if that happens in the wrong place, like the throat and the larynx, it can obstruct breathing and cause problems. Histamine is also a vasodilator, which means that uh, dilate, or you get bigger, it increases blood flow to the part. So if we have um, increased blood flow to skin, for example, we see redness. And one skin reaction is hives. Hives is a type 1 hypersensitivity. Uh, it's characterized by wheels and flares. Wheels are the bumps, flares is the redness. <clears throat> Typically then you get the allergen on your skin, it comes into contact with your, uh, your sensitized mast cells, they release their histamine, and you see the uh, very rapid, because this, these are type 1, uh, which are uh, the rapid, almost immediate reactions. Hives can be blocked by antihistamines, because it's histamine that's causing a lot of, a lot of the problems. You can also get hives after eating uh, an allergen. The allergen is absorbed through the intestinal tract. It enters the blood, moves around your body, but only the mast cells in your skin are sensitized to it. So when the blood passes through your skin, containing the allergen, it triggers the mast cells and you have, uh, you have all of the signs and symptoms of hives. Another important type 1 reaction is hay fever. Itching, teary eyes, sneezing, or the uh, kind of hallmarks of histamine. Release of histamine in the upper respiratory tract, which is the nasal cavity, by mast cells in the nasal mucosa. <clears throat> mast cells release their histamine, that leads to all those effects we just talked about. And two in hay fever, uh, you can block many of the effects using antihistamines. Antihistamines work by blocking uh, receptors. Give me just one second again. So there, I've added a little picture of uh, how um, antihistamines work. Cells that, get, that are affected by histamine, as you may have been able to work out, they can only interact with the histamine when the histamine binds to a receptor on the cell surface. Antihistamines block up those receptors so that the histamine can't bind. Another important uh, localized allergic reaction, this time happening in the lower respiratory tract, uh, the lungs, is asthma. Asthma is again, mast cells become sensitized and then they are triggered by a subsequent exposure and they release inflammatory mediators, including histamine. And that has a few effects. The muscles around the bronchial tubes, they uh, constrict in addition to increased mucus production. So here's a, a, a normal healthy airway. The air can get easily through this large gap here is an asthmatic uh, airway from an attack. We have the constriction by the muscle. We have the excess production of mucus. And from this, it's easy to see why uh, an asthma attack leads to all of the symptoms and signs that it does. Difficulty breathing, uh, wheezing. Simply, you can't pass enough air through the airways. Unlike the other localized reactions, you don't typically treat asthma 
with antihistamines. Several reasons for that I won't go into, but it may be the case that this is a mistake and uh, antihistamines may be beneficial to, you. in fact, most um, asthma sufferers. The current treatment for asthma is fast-acting bronchodilators. Maybe one reason why antihistamines aren't given in an attack, simply because attacks, if they're serious, can be life-threatening in a very short uh, amount of time. But for long-term treatment, it's uh, typically this thing called an inhaled corticosteroid to control uh, the effects. Systemic anaphylaxis. Systemic caused by basophils. Same mechanism, except basophils are found in the blood. The blood is found all over your body, so basophils are circulating everywhere in your body. Unlike mast cells that are either found in the skin, or they're found in the nasal cavity, or they're found in, uh, in the lungs. <clears throat> if you have then triggering of basophils in the blood, you have release of inflammatory mediators and histamine system-wide. So it is systemic. Symptoms include uh, anaphylactic shock, breathing difficulties as uh, th the uh, throat swells, rapid and weak pulse, a skin rash, nausea, and vomiting. Most people who develop symptoms of anaphylaxis do so within a few minutes of eating, uh, eating the allergen or being exposed to the allergen. And here are some, uh, here are some um, kind of the hallmarks of the swelling in the face here of an anaphylactic uh, reaction. So what's happening on slide 19? We have this uh, huge release of inflammatory mediators we have then all these mediators working on blood vessels, dilating blood vessels, making the blood vessels leaky. That's lots and lots of fluid loss. That's lots of swelling, but one of the most severe uh, um, effects is a, a, a severe drop in blood pressure. This uh, sudden drop and sudden Significant drop in blood pressure, can, blood pressure can lead to heart failure, insufficient blood flow to the brain and other vital organs, leading to the uh, symptoms known as anaphylactic shock. In addition to uh, expanding the blood vessels, bronchial tubes can also constrict and lead to suffocation. So, you may know someone who uh, has, you may yourself have um, the, the, an allergy, a severe anaphylactic allergy, such as bee stings and peanuts or penicillin. You then have to be very, very aware of your surroundings. You have to be very, very aware of the foods you're eating and you're probably going to have a, an EpiPen nearby. EpiPen delivers epinephrine. It dilates the bronchial tubes and it halts that fluid leakage. Okay, lastly in this section, we have uh, treatments to prevent allergic reactions. So treatments to prevent allergic reactions. There are different kinds of uh, treatments out there. But the one we're going to look at is uh, desensitization. What the idea is that we want to um, trigger the immune system to produce IgG and then have the IgG bind to the antigen before it can bind to the IgE. So, we have our mast cells. We have our mast cells sensitized with our IgE. 
and we have our allergen. Allergen makes it to the mast cell, sticks to the IgE, and will trigger the, uh, the cascade of events. Um, so, allergen makes it to our sensitized mast cells, triggers the release of inflammatory mediators, all of the bad stuff from uh, those reactions. But if we can intercept the allergen, it's making its way down to the mast cells, but instead of being picked up by a mast cell, it is picked up first by IgG. IgG comes in, it picks up all of the allergen, so that no allergen, or indeed very small amounts of allergen, make it to the mast cells. The way you do that, the way you try and stimulate IgG, is by uh, uh, injection of small amounts of antigen over a very long time. You're trying to coax the immune system into producing, having those B cells class switch into producing IgG. Omalizumab is a RUMAB, recombinant humanized monoclonal antibody. <clears throat> it's a form of IgG molecule. It binds to the FC region of IgE and blocks its attachment. So this is another uh, mechanism. Here are our mast cells. Here are our mast cell receptors for IgE. Here is our plasma cells. <coughs> plasma cells making IgE. And in the sensitization process, they have to get to the mast cells and stick in the receptors. The idea behind this uh, recombinant humanized, so the idea behind this uh, strategy is to attach IgG to the constant region of the IgE and then this configuration of antibody cannot stick. So it blocks the ability of the uh, IgE to stick to the receptors in the first place. And then if our mast cells don't become sensitized, then they can't be triggered. So these are our two mechanisms we'll talk about in terms of uh, preventing uh, type one uh, allergic reactions. Both of them desensitizing, but in different ways. The first one, uh, intercepting the allergen before it makes it to the sensitized mast cells. The second one, preventing the mast cells from being uh, sensitized in the first place. Both of them rely on IgG. And there's a couple of slides here, uh, just to remind yourselves um, what IgG does how it's, how it's uh, important in the primary and in particularly the secondary response. It can take around uh, four weeks to generate and has uh, a whole lot of, as antibodies in general, have a whole lot of protected outcomes. So sensitization. 
B cells are involved because they uh, interact with the allergen and they show the allergen then to T cells. T cells have been trained by dendritic cells, or indeed they have had the allergen showed to them by dendritic cells. They were trained in a few different ways, but the upshot is that they've been trained to recognize this allergen as a, a dangerous molecule. So they then trigger the B cells. The B cells go through that process of class switching. In this case, they class switch to IgE, and then they differentiate into memory cells and plasma cells, the plasma cells making the antibody itself. IgE then sticks to the receptors on mast cells and basophils and in the subsequent exposure the allergen sticks to the IgE that's on those mast cells and basophils causing them to degranulate. Histamine, a very important uh, one of the inflammatory mediators. Histamine has a lot of uh, different reactions, things like uh, triggering um, tearing and sneezing and itching, triggering um, capillary dilation and capillary uh, leakiness. So we'll be able to distinguish the different types of local allergic reaction. Hives, hay fever, asthma. Hives on the skin, hay fever in the upper respiratory tract, asthma in the lower respiratory tract. All three, these three uh, are triggered by mast cells in the various different tissues. So that's the main difference. Also be able to uh, differentiate them in terms of molecules and cells and symptoms. Systemic anaphylaxis is differentiated because it is triggered by basophil uh, degranulation. Basophil is in the blood, which is how it's able to be systemic. <clears throat> so know what molecules and cells are involved in systemic anaphylaxis. Also know what uh, the, uh, the major um, effects are. What, what, why is uh, systemic anaphylaxis so dangerous? And then know those two mechanisms we looked at to prevent allergic reactions. And know uh, the characteristics of IgG, particularly as opposed to IgE. Okay, that's that for this section.